everyone, I'm Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and welcome to the uh, video tutorial for the Juniper toiletry bag. This is not a new pattern. Um, I've just uh, decided to update the construction of the pattern and that required uh, a video tutorial to be filmed. Um, the first thing you're going to do, which I always uh, insist on for every um, every video, every pattern, is to start by printing out and reading the pattern. Well, you don't have to print it, but you definitely, definitely should read it. And then you'll want to print out the pattern pieces that are at the end of the pattern. And you're going to read through the pattern. I recommend reading at least once, but twice is, is better. And you're going to pay special attention to the pattern pieces section. I know that this section here tends to just be skimmed over, but I, it is important, especially um, for patterns that have a mix of pieces that are uh, pattern pieces and cut to measurement, because if your pattern pieces are not accurate, then they don't fit well with the pieces that are cut to measurement. So it's important that you print out your pattern pieces don't uh, print them from your browser. You should download them to your computer. Open them up in Adobe Reader and print them at actual size, not 100% scale. Actual size, and that will give you the, more, the most accurate results. Now, something that I've added, started adding in my patterns, is the measurement of a straight line for certain pattern pieces. So on pages 11 and 12, I've included a measurement for one of the straight lines. So make sure that you measure those to uh, double check that your uh, pattern pieces printed out accurately. So before I go over the pattern pieces and the, uh, the fabric and interfacing pieces that you have to cut from those, um, I'm just gonna go over the notions and supplies that you need. Um, so you're going to need, there's not very much, there's no hardware on this bag, which is fantastic. Um, the only thing you're going to need are either two, so two 12-inch pre-made zippers, or if you're using zipper tape like I am, you want to add a bit extra, and I'm using 14-inch uh, pieces of zipper tape. So you want two of them with a single pull, and you cannot use uh, number three, which is the thinner uh, dress zippers. Um, uh, this bag is designed for... Uh, using 4.5 or number five uh, zippers. So they're a little bit wider. If you measure the tape, uh, it's about one and a quarter inch wide and a number three zipper is one inch wide. So even though the measurement itself refers to the size of the coil, for me, for um, accuracy of measurements, I'm really, I'm really taking into consideration the width of the zipper tape. So if you want, you can add some rivets uh, when you attach your handle. I'm not going to do that for the video. Um, and then the only thing you're going to need um, in terms of, you know, aside from the usual uh, pins or clips or any of those sorts of things, uh, you're going to need some fabric glue. So I tend to use Fabri-Tac. And I'll, I'll, you'll see that a little bit later when um, I'm gluing the Peltex pieces. And then you're going to need 36 inches or a yard of, you can either use pre-made uh, packaged piping, or I'm gonna be making my own. I use a 1 8 of an inch uh, cotton cording and I cut my own strips. Um, so I'm actually going to include that as part of the video, making my own um, uh, piping. It's very easy to do and I, I always make my own because it's really difficult sometimes to find piping that matches your fabric. So now that uh, we've gone over the, the notions, um, there is a cutting chart on page, my print, my, my printer cut off my page, but I think this is page three. So you're gonna see a cutting chart. I no longer include cutting lists. Everything is a cutting chart um, because um, there was some uh, that were getting confused by the two lists. So we have a cutting chart here on page three. And as you cut your items, you can check them off the list to make sure that you have everything. So now we're going to go through the pattern pieces. Um, if there's a piece that's cut to measurements, um, 
usually all you'll know because there'll be a measurement. Now, sometimes there is a pattern piece and I still include the measurements and that's also a great way to double check your printing accuracy. So the first thing is the exterior side panel. And what I'll do is I'm going to get a juniper and show you. Okay, so this is a juniper bag that I made while uh, redesigning the update to this pattern. So as I go through the pattern pieces, I'm going to show you where it's located on the actual bag itself so that it's a little bit more clear for you and it helps you uh, pick out your fabric. So the first thing on the cutting chart is the exterior side panel. So it looks like this. And I always list um, the different uh, pieces you need to cut from each pattern piece. So for this one, you're going to need two exterior fabrics, two um, fusible woven interfacing, and two foam interfacing. Now on the bag, that's this piece right here. The next is the accent strip. So that is this pattern piece right here. And on the bag, it's this black piece right here and right here. So with that, if you're using fabric, you're going to cut two pieces of exterior fabric, two pieces of fusible woven interfacing, and two pieces of fusible fleece. However, if you're using cork or vinyl, you don't need anything except the cork or vinyl. So it kind of speeds up the process a bit if you're using cork or vinyl. You just have to cut two pieces. Then there is the accent strip firm interfacing, which looks very similar to the accent strip. It's just smaller. And you're going to use this to cut two pieces of firm interfacing. I am using Peltex, but you can use Stiff Stuff. Um, I'm sure some Decavilles will work, um, but I, I really prefer using Peltex. The next thing is the exterior top panel. So that's this pattern piece right here. And so you'll have, you'll notice when you're printing out your pattern pieces, there's two separate pieces, a left and a right, and you'll see the matching star symbol. So you're going to type those together like this. And then this is a piece that's cut on the fold, but usually you're cutting on the fold where it's uh, vertical, but this time you're cutting horizontal. So if you're using a directional print, you'll want to pay attention. I purposely try to avoid using directional prints for Juniper. It just makes it a lot simpler. So this is your exterior top panel piece, this whole portion here. So I have cut two exterior fabric pieces. No, sorry, one exterior fabric piece, sorry. One fusible woven interfacing and one fusible fleece. Now the next piece are the exterior zipper facing, and this is a new piece uh, for the update. So if I open up one of the pockets here, you can't see it, but we're, so we're, we're, I'm changing this so that you don't see exposed zipper tape, which the old version had. So now it's gonna be a nice clean uh, hidden zipper tape in between the layers of fabric here. But in order to do that, we need a zipper facing piece. So that's what this piece is for. This is another piece that you're going to have to tape together with the matching symbols. You just butt those lines and tape them together. And you're going to cut two exterior fabric. So you'll want that fabric to match this fabric that you used for the exterior top panel. And you cut two exterior and two fusible woven interfacing pieces. The next is the bottom. So this is the bottom of the bag. And again, if you're using fabric, you're going to need to cut a fusible woven interfacing piece. However, I'm once again using vinyl. I use, I'm using this uh, pretty uh, glitter vinyl. And so I cut from the, the bottom piece here, which is a cut on fold. Uh, and I also provided the measurements in case you just want to cut to measurement. But you're need, going to need one vinyl or exterior fabric. And then if you're using fabric, you, you, you also cut a fusible woven interfacing and then one foam interfacing. So I'm using the glitter vinyl, so no fusible woven, and I just also cut the uh, foam interfacing. 
And then next we have the bottom firm interfacing. So it's very similar to the bottom piece. It's again, just a little bit smaller. And you're going to use that to cut out one uh, firm interfacing. I use this, I always use sew in interfacing. And again, my preference is using Peltex. So that's what I've used for that piece. Next is the lining. So this is your lining pattern piece. And with this, it's very simple. You're gonna cut on the fold four lining pieces and four fusible woven interfacing pieces. So on the inside of the bag, we're gonna have two new pieces now. So these are your outer zipper panel and your inner zipper panel pieces. And you're going to have one for each of your zipper compartments. So that's what these pattern pieces look like. So this is the lining inner zipper panel. So it's what's going to be on the inside of the bag. So in towards the inside of the bag. And then you have your uh, lining outer zipper panel. So very important for the uh, lining outer zipper panel, you actually have to cut mirror image sets. And so you need one mirror image set of lining fabric. So you'll notice that they are, they have a curved edge and they have, they're on opposite sides. So the easiest way to cut a mirror set is to put your two layers of fabric, either uh, wrong sides together, right sides together, doesn't matter which, and then you cut out uh, the two pieces at once. And then you're also doing the same thing for the fusible woven interfacing. So this is the glue side of both, and you need to have them uh, match the lining fabric pieces so that they can be fused like this. And then they're exact opposites, right? So the inner zipper panel is much easier. There's no curved edges, it's just a rectangle piece. So you just cut two lining pieces and two fusible woven interfacing pieces. Another new piece for this pattern is the the sorry the zipper end panel. So that's this little piece right here, and I'll show you where that is in the bag. So it's the piece here that's at the end of the zipper at both ends and in both zipper compartments. And again, for this piece, you have to cut two sets mirror image pieces. So you'll see. And you're cutting the same way. So you fold two layers of fabric, either right sides together or wrong sides together, and you cut out the two pieces at once. So you see we have two sets mirror image and the same thing for the interfacing. You need two sets mirror image. And then you're going to need your handle piece. So if you're using uh, cork or vinyl like I am, you don't need to cut any interfacing. You're just going to cut the one piece and there is a measurement provided for it in the cutting chart. If you're using fabric, you're going to have to um, also cut some matching interfacing. Now, there is a piece called the handle firm interfacing, which I believe I forgot to cut. So that is cut to measurement and we're going to be sewing that a little later on during construction and it's going to be located just beneath where the handle is and it 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 helps to so when your your bag is full and you pick up your handle it will stop it from caving in as much so it gives it a bit more structure at the handle area and i used peltex for that as well uh the zipper pull tab that's these little squares of fabric I did not cut any interfacing for these. So it's just fabric because we don't want these to be too thick. Otherwise it gets very difficult to sew here at the ends. So these are your zipper pull tabs. There's one at each end of the bag and it's just a little something to hold on to that helps you to uh, open and close the zippers. And then because I'm making my own piping, I went ahead and cut some fabric strips to do the piping. I cut them one and a quarter inch wide and um, I didn't have 36 
inch length. So I cut two smaller pieces and um, I'm just going to make two separate uh, pieces of piping. And that's what's going to be used along these seams over here on both sides of the bag. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fuse all the fusible woven interfacing to the matching pieces. And then we're going to just go over uh, how we apply all of our uh, firm interfacing pieces uh, to their matching uh, cork or vinyl or fabric pieces. Okay, so I've interfaced all of the fusible woven interfacing to the wrong side of my fabric pieces. Uh, there's just a few extra steps we need to do for the interfacing portion. So you're going to need your accent strip pieces and your accent strip firm interfacing pieces. So flip these over so they are wrong sides facing up. Now pay attention to these sides here. There is a, a curved edge and one, the top edge is slightly narrower than the bottom edge. So you want to make sure that when you're gluing these that you're you're matching uh, those curved edges to the accent strip pieces. And here's my fabric glue that I'm using. It's Fabri-Tac. And you're just going to apply some of this to the wrong side. And then you glue this to the wrong side. So making sure that you have an equal amount of space all the way around. And then I put something heavy and on top and I let it dry. So I'm going to do the same thing for these two. Next, you're going to need your um, bottom firm interfacing and your bottom foam interfacing piece. And we're going to glue the firm interfacing to the foam piece. Um, sometimes you can glue it directly to your cork or vinyl, but um, if I am using a combination uh, that includes foam, then I really prefer uh, gluing to the foam because sometimes um, if you're not careful with the amount of glue, you can kind of see glue marks on your exterior fabric. Now, when you glue the firm interfacing, make sure that you're leaving an equal amount of space all around, which should be about half an inch of space. Okay, and then again, I'll put something heavy and I will let this dry. And when it's dry, you're going to take this piece, your bottom exterior piece, and you're going to place it on top. And then use clips to hold it in place. Now, if you're not, not sure about how well your machine handles layers, um, you're going to baste these, the foam to the bottom exterior with a zigzag stitch. Use the zigzag stitch that's about one quarter inch wide. However, if you're confident with your machine's ability to handle layers, thick layers, then you can just base this in place all the way around with one, one eighth, one quarter inch seam allowance. And you can just use a regular straight stitch, but make sure you're using a, a basting stitch, although it won't matter too, too much. Okay, so I'm going to base that in place a bit later. I'm just going to set it aside for now. Now you're going to need your exterior panel pieces. 
and they should the exterior pieces should have their fusible uh, woven interfacing fused to the wrong side now you're going to place one on each of the foam interfacing pieces and you're going to use clips to hold that in place and again same thing that i mentioned for the bottom piece um, if you can zigzag stitch the foam to the wrong side of these exterior panel pieces otherwise um, just use a regular basting stitch basting straight stitch on your machine Now the last thing you'll need is your exterior top panel and it should have the fusible woven interfacing on the wrong side and then you're going to need the matching piece of fusible fleece. Then you're also going to need your um, exterior top panel pattern piece. And so you'll see that I put the uh, location of the zipper pocket lining, um, sorry, the zipper pocket openings okay so there are the two openings and then this is where the uh, our handle placement will be so what we're going to do is we're going to mark the location of our zipper pocket openings on the fusible fleece because what i would like to do is to trim away some of the fleece at the zipper pocket openings otherwise it will be much too thick so you're going to fold your fusible fleece how you had it when you cut it out okay so there's the folded edge and then you need we're going to mark see the the dark marks here the the little rectangle boxes at the end we're going to transfer those to the fusible fleece and so normally i would have cut those out ahead of time but I did no such thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this pen and I'm punching out and marking at each end of that rectangle and hoping that it will work. Okay, so hopefully you can see it but there's the two marks here so now you're going to need a ruler actually i'm going to get a smaller ruler to make it easier and then i'm just going to draw a line to connect those two dots okay now i also want to mark over here at the folded edge so if you place your piece back here, and then you're just going to make a mark where the location of this dash line and this dash line. So you want to mark it along that folded edge. And this will help us to draw out the rectangle shape that we want. So hopefully you can see these marks. So now I am going to draw this out and then I am bravely going to just use my rotary cutter and cut these out and if you're not comfortable doing that and you're scared you're going to mess up what you can do is make those marks on the other half of your fleece so keep it folded keep it folded flip it over like this and then you can just repeat the same marks but I'm going to be brave and I'm just going to leave it folded and use my rotary cutter to cut these out.
Okay, so hopefully I did this. I think I'm gonna need a pair of scissors just to make sure. Okay, so there's one. There's two. And then we have the, the rectangle boxes uh, cut out. So now I'm going to take this piece, the exterior top panel piece, and I'm going to place this over top, like so. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that they're the openings here are fairly straight. And then you're going to press. So this is glue side down. So glue side is facing the wrong side of your exterior top panel. And then you uh, fuse the fleece in place. So this is the end of the first video. This is the end of the, the cutting and interfacing portion. In the uh, next video, we're going to start the assembly of our bag and we're going to actually start by uh, basting our piping to our exterior panels. Sorry, exterior side panels.